Back to the games, gamers. That's right, our first official episode of Citizen Speak. This is a video, this is a forum to be released for the devs of Star Citizen so that the fans, us, can really get our opinions and our voices heard. Last episode, which you can check out here in this card, went fantastically well. I would have liked a little bit more views, but we had tons and tons of comments, tons of feedback from everybody in the community and from new people basically saying i love the idea uh let's do this all the time <laughs> and just tons of ideas i mean look at all these ideas and and what we did is basically voice our opinions on things that we wanted to talk about so i categorized them in a notepad uh and you can see them here and i've organized as such as this uh series continues i'd love to hear more input from everybody out there this is what this is for uh, one of these types of channels on YouTube where you actually do have a voice where people are listening, are responding, you can comment anytime you want and you know somebody's actually reading it. No trolling, no crap, no shitty down votes, none of that. I mean, you'll have some of that, but like for the most part, everybody's constructive here and that's what we're really doing is we're creating this um, community that can speak out to developers of not just Star Citizen but other games and we're going to do this uh, as we get bigger and bigger and bigger and become this mega force <laughs> mega team force da -na 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 -na. mega team force uh, sorry I, was, I got a song in my head it was a horrible one really alright I need a little drink here to, to just refresh the mouth and I will be taking sips from time to time so please excuse me this is a live event that we are recording here one moment we have tons of gamers right now on our stream. Thank you very much for showing up. We are at a friend's house. I am not able to stream from my home. Thank you. I'm getting a lot of questions in here. There's over 200 people in the chat correct right now. Uh, but I will go over currently what I think is important, which are the comments that we got from our YouTube videos, the things that I have actually met, made notes on, and things that need to be discussed. Hopefully, and I, not even hopefully, I know that SIG watches. This is great. Uh, they will read it, and in turn, we will see uh, effects happen in the game. All right, and these are these trading is one of those relatively harder things to find on the RSI forums. I don't know if many of you um, watching right now are that interested in trade. Of course, if you're still in this video, you're probably a trader. Good for you. If you're not. Uh, you're just maybe kind of like skimming over everything that I'm saying right now. I'm fast forwarding to see where the exciting parts are. Uh, you just missed that part. <laughs> you just missed that. If you were skimming around, that was exciting. <laughs> but but uh, most of the people watching right now are traders or those interested in, in the economy. Um, here's our first comment from uh, Kaizoku. Uh, he wants to see a Craigslist type feature. Uh, maybe under a, a tab, for instance, a uh, transport tab, requ requesting help. And I did like the comment that Hugo put down below as his reply. He said something like the contract system on EVE. Now, I have discussed this previously in an economic video. There's two of them. Here's one of them, the most current one, which is an economy styled video that I highly recommend that everybody check out where we discuss the 90 10 split. Uh, we, we talk about, you know, a lot dealing with just a basic economy and how to apply it into this game. So if anybody wants to get into that more than the trade, go over to that video. That's a very exciting video. Or just stick around, have fun. But I think the contract system in EVE would be a great complement to Star Citizen because it makes it more personal. The contract system in EVE, for those of that aren't aware of it, I'm going to post some pictures here on what the, what the format looks like, is a very easy to use template. I want to say this again because when it, when 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 it comes to trading, it's it's something that has to be simplistic. You have to create tools that are very simplistic to use. The more complicated you make tools to use, the more traders will not be gravitating towards this game, and you will not have a real economy because you will not have real traders. It is really important that you listen to this, devs. It's a very great comment by uh, Kaizoku. 
um, you know, everything needs a point of origin so that these items can be traced back to wherever it's being sold. Since these are very item specific trading units, all these units are going to be able to be tracked within the game. You have them. There needs to be an inventory. There aren't many uh, dialogues out there when it comes to trade on the RSI forum. There aren't very many things on the forum that discuss how things are going to be tracked in a type of a database. How, what type of database are we talking about? You know, uh, since these are item specific type of trade. You know, and everything has like a space involved with it, a physicality to it. It's going to be a little bit harder than it is in Eve, and that's the that's the big challenge when you're talking about any type of contract system because you're not just talking about like in Eve you had little square tiles and little units of of a, just a tile that you can merge together. This isn't like that. You know, these these items that you see actually have like a physicality to them, where I think Eve really did not. And it was very easy to, for Eve to kind of implement like a database that they had, uh, whether in a contract system or whether in their just trading formats. I did like the fact that they do have charting. And that's another issue I want to get into with the trade is I want charts. I want charts so I can track like the, the sales of an item, like the high points, the low points, the demand and the supply are really important for a trader to look at the history of what these units sell for. And I want there to be an easy trackable way for me to see on any given item that I will trade the regions. I want to see all the regions on one tool, on one easy to use interface. I want to see an interface that is very easy to use. The interface, the interface, the interface, again, has to be very easy to use. One screen, type in an item, boom, there's the item. All the buy orders, all the sell orders, okay, buy and sell orders. You got to have that with every single item in every single region. So very important. I want to see it. And I want to know what it's selling for uh, in one system versus another system. All right, all right, enough of that. That that's that's a, a pretty good topic. Anybody have input on the database? Anybody have input on buy and sell orders? Any anybody have input on the type of format they would like to see? Because I really don't see this input on the forums. It is not easy for me to track in the RSI forums. I want to put that out there. I have gone to the forums and I have not seen any information like this. If you guys have that information, please put it down in the comments below. We are going to develop a dialogue. We are going to develop a, a database, as it were, within the Citizen Speak videos. I really like what we're doing here. It's going to do something. It's going to have an effect. I actually put the first episode of Citizen Speak out on Sandy Gardner's page, told her how much I was a fan. and. Uh, you know, hopefully, I, I believe it's been seen because the second I posted that, I noticed like a huge jump in the amount of views to that video, at least a few hundred. And I'm hoping that, uh, you know, uh, are the word on the games is spreading around because it is something that I feel is very uh, serious for us to get our voices heard. I know that there is a one dev that watches us uh, and has said very nice things um, and sent me an email. So thank you. Uh, I will keep him anonymous. I think it is important uh, that we just kind of don't out anybody. You know, that's up to him. But um, thank you very much. Now, next uh, comment. Ray. Ah, here's Ray. Here's our buddy Ray. Uh, by the way, pledge on Patreon. Thank you very much. Uh, Ray is a big contributor on Patreon. He's the reason why we can do a game giveaway every single month. In January, we have a contest. Here's the video for that check that out guys and get involved in that and ray is going to have a blowout february he's he's going to be um giving away so many prizes here on the games just this guy is amazing you guys all have to say thank you to ray we've got such a huge blowout giveaway coming up in february if you guys aren't involved you're crazy like i don't even understand how people cannot be involved in this there's going to be so many things that we are giving away in february it's maddening it's it just it drives me crazy it, in fact when ray was like hey al i got some really cool things i want to give away and what do you think he's got a video uh i'll put the link down below it's it's literally crazy what ray is doing <laughs> i've told him i'm like dude do you have enough money to eat for the month 
because there's just so many things he's giving away. Thank you, Ray. So Ray's comment. <laughs> Trading. So what best ship? What's the cheapest? Too expensive? What systems to go to avoid? And what can we expect? Uh, so many questions to answer. Thank you, Ray, for your comment. Okay, so trading. What ship are we going to look at to be the, the cheapest or most expensive ships? I, I personally, this is my, and, and please comment below, gamers, like you always do. Uh, but one of my favorite ships, I think, you know, even though I didn't like the new upgraded look of the Freelancer, I still think the Freelancer is a good overall kind of trucking ship. I just don't like that underbelly. I don't like the underbelly. You can go on my channel. You can check out the Freelancer videos that I do have there, both the 2.0 and the 2.1 uh, versions, and check those out. I just don't like the fact that the underbelly is it kind of exposed, but it is a Mack truck. We literally saw me run over a ship and blow it up, which was fantastic. And we, we, we heard my excitement as I laughed, as I ran through the ship. <laughs> it was a good time. It was a very fun time. So Freelancer, I think, is a good basic kind of ship for trading. I think you have other ships that might like have like kind of multi-purpose roles, like the Constellation could also be kind of a trade ship as well as the exploration type ship. And you can get like a two for one, but it's obviously a more expensive ship. So you kind of kind of get gauge what kind of ship you want when you enter the game. My personal advice is is just to start out really cheap. You know, if you can't afford the 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 more expensive of ships get yourself just a basic package just to start out before the final release of the game get yourself something really cheap like an aurora you're not going to be owning it up in it but at least you can fly around get a feel of the game where it's at walk around in the game for like 45 50 bucks and then because you bought the package, you're going to get the game free and you're going to get Squadron uh, 42 free. A lot of people have this misconception that it's very expensive. It is not expensive to get this game. It is cheaper to get this game than most games. Okay, so anyway, you, you've got a couple different types of ships that I would suggest, like the Freelancer or the Constellation, but there are so many more. Obviously, if you're really into trading, you're going to get the Banu. A merchantman uh, ship, which I find fascinating. It's like an alien uh, uh, ship from, from the Banu. And uh, you can check out a video that I did on alien lore and stuff like that to, to see what the Banu are like. They're very hardcore traders. One second, I'm going to take a little sip here. <laughs> Having a good time. Love this show. Let's get to the next comment. Uh, obviously, systems that you have to avoid, like Ray had asked, um, you're going to look at um, the arc map and it will tell you which systems are safer, which systems aren't. And also, you know, based upon what items you are trading, you know, if they're black market type items, I think that it would be cool if you take a black market items and sell them in UEE type systems for like a huge bonus. You know, I, I really want that aspect to be in the game. I want to take something in a CD area, buy it real cheap, and I want to take it to a very legit kind of UEE area and sell it for like mega, mega, mega bucks because I know it's going to be hard getting in through customs and I want that aspect to be there in the game. So I hope, uh, again, that that is in the game or that the people are paying attention to that because that's the exhilaration of being like that type of a trader there's a lot of different types of traders there's going to be those types of traders that are buying and selling high on mass quantity items to manufacturers and there's going to be uh traders that are just doing like kind of rare exotic items and then there's going to be um uh, traders that are doing items that are a little bit harder to get for more science uh, oriented types of items for the mechanics and the engineering uh, sectors, you know, like those types of items that do repairs. And then there's going to be those types of items that are black market types of items where they're really, really kind of like bounty hunters uh, are after them, shit like that, where you're like a Han Solo type character and you're like transporting shit that you really shouldn't be uh, transporting and getting paid mega 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 money but like the the risk is huge but the re the reward is even is even bigger so i really hope that is in the game as well all right let's see here next comment we have a uh, john m billion <laughs> trading is a great choice dg thank you what about saying how to help traders combat uh being pirated uh okay 
all right and he likes my intro music i try to make my intros very exciting <laughs> but he's basically saying okay how do i protect myself against pirates now you know i have an elite dangerous uh series called bringing the dangerous where i show people how to be a pirate he's still firing his missiles i'm like screw you dude boom run right into it before his shields go up and bam that's how it's done ladies and gentlemen that's how it's done gamers but I think that series also helps traders sh uh, protect themselves because if they see the videos, they'll see like the mechanics of the game and they will also say, okay, well, these are the things I need to do to, to take care of myself so that I can protect myself against pirates. Um, and I think I might be doing the same thing for SC. I think I might actually be doing, um, you know, the same kind of seedy things because I'm going to be like a freelancer corporation, uh, kind of like a piratey uh, corporation, kind of like, uh, whatever we need to do to make tons of money kind of corporation and provide for our members type corporation. If you want to join it, it's called the Plexus Syndicate. It is down below. Uh, it's going to be based upon me teaching people uh, to trade and to make the most money that they can w within the game so that they can basically make the game work for them. Um, but anyhow, how do we protect against pirates in this game? I think basically just unity in numbers when you're talking about uh, protecting yourself against any type of pirating force, I think th I think your safety in numbers kind of mentality. If you ever watch like the Animal Planet, <laughs> and you're watching you know predators hunting down you know like because that's how I I view it really, you know like the predators they're hunting down you know the herd animals. The the traders are kind of like the herd animals you know. Uh, but traders look at items that they buy like predators, which is kind of fun because there's this chain that exists, you know, it's just like the circle of life. Okay, sorry. Here I go again. I need another drink. Apologies. But you will have predators and predators will go after weaker um, entities. Now, if, you're, if you have a lot of numbers around you and you're within a good group, a good organization that offers some type of uh, support, some type of help, if you don't have that and you're really going solo, you have to be careful. Of course, you have insurance on your ship, so they will replace it. Whether that's a one-time thing or a two-time thing, I'm not quite sure. I'm sure the answer to that is somewhere within the uh, 10 for the chairman episodes. But if you guys know that, put that down below. Um, I really like the fact that people are still listening to this. Thank you very much for listening to this episode of Citizen Speak. There is so much content to be put out here. We have so much more to go over. I want to go over a stock market right now. Okay. I want there to be a stock market within the game. I want there to be some type of a stock market that actually you can buy and sell stock with corporations that are very important corporations, very important entities within Star Citizen. I think the universe of Star Citizen has this great, um, uh, what I want to say, this great history, the, the stories that are within Star Citizen already developed by the people that are making the game are so fascinating to me that it, it just makes sense that I want to buy a piece of it. I want to buy pieces of corporations and I want those stocks to be actual living, breathing quotes. I want them to be from people. I don't want them to be computer generated. And again, you can watch the economy video. We talk about that a little bit. Uh, the 90-10 split scares me where we're talking about 90% AI and 10% human affected. Whether we're talking about actuality of NPC versus actual player driven economy or actual uh, just uh, appropriation in fact of uh, population 90-10, we're not quite sure. We haven't really gotten to the bottom of that yet. We haven't really differentiated. We haven't said, okay, 90-10 is in regards to what is it 90 10 actual player versus npc or is it is it actually 90 10 npc versus player driven economy because that's 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 kind of like you're gonna have to step in and be the fed and ease off on the 90 and you know like as time uh progresses i think that's what they're doing if in that scenario that's the case and then they will kind of reduce the amount of like npc action that is involved as far as the missioning and you know things that are affecting the economy in a false way which is kind of what the fed does in real life in america is they will uh purposely uh inflate or deflate values based upon how much money they inject into the system we won't get into that that's economy that's the video that we did already 
but I do want to see a stock market. I want to have the ability to buy and sell stocks. Now, GTA 5 had that ability. It was all computer generated. I did like that they put that in the game, but I want this to be more player oriented. I want this to actually have like a, a, a trading tool. I, again, we're going back to trading tools. I want to see something like if I log into a brokerage account, which I do in real life, and I log into like say one of them, which is Charles Schwab, I have a trading screen and I have uh, stocks that I can buy and sell and I can see histories on buy and sell. Now, am I saying there should be like a false history already built in to like an Aegis? Say I wanna buy Aegis stock, okay? Do I, do I wanna log into this format, this tool hopefully that comes with Star Citizen eventually and then see like Aegis stock, like a false history of it? Okay, that's cool. You wanna, you wanna like a false history? But from day one, from initial boot, I want that shit to be real. I want that shit to be like, the stuff that we are trading as star citizens, not computers. I, I want anybody involved that, that it doesn't have a brain. <laughs> no computer chips here. I want all brains. And if that means that the buy orders and the sell orders are very separated, you know, and the, and the volume is very slow and staggered. So you have very big gaps between them, buy and sell. And, and those that are really traders understand what I'm talking about right, right now. That's fine. I don't care because eventually you'll have more and more traders that get interested because they understand it's a real economy and they have like more influence in the beginning to really make uh, a lot of money because of those gaps, because of the differences between the buys and the sells, uh, they will get rich that way. And I wanna see the effect of that. Also the credits, again, we're kinda getting more into economy again, uh, but we'll touch on this basically like credits versus real life dollars. A lot of people want to see like the credits go out and you can cash out back to real life. But then you get into a lot of, you know, uh, laws and shit like, uh, you know, you, I don't think that's going to be part of the game, honestly, because then they're going to have to deal with uh, Uncle Sam. But anyhow. All right. Next comment. Whoo. This I'm, I'm telling you what we're burning right through this. Uh, Laura, who is awesome who's known me since like the original Throshton's channel. Uh, thank you, Laura. You always super supportive to us here on the games. You were with my children when they were very small on my channel. You are awesome. I think you're the best. Uh, Laura says, I'd like to be able to have the same trading platform in my trading ship that I would on a planet. Now that's really cool. I actually didn't think of that. You know, trading should be able, you should be able to trade just about anywhere. This is a really good comment. You should be able to trade like in your ship on a PC or computer or some type of communications, maybe within certain types of ships, maybe not within all ships, but maybe within types of ships. And I think I even mentioned this in an old Mustang review where I was in a, a particular type of Mustang in the back quarters, there was a cabin and you open up like a PC and I, and I was mentioning like in that particular review how I'd like to see Sadaball and like gamble on Sadaball, <laughs> you know, that, which is which is a whole nother thing. And uh, I think that would be cool if you could open up a PC within your uh, ship. Even the last one I did, which was the uh, uh, Warden review, which I just did a video on. There was a there was a, a kind of like a tactical computer in there, but like some type of communication device where you could actually trade from that as well as can go down on a planet and use their own trading platform within their trading building and their respective building. I think that would be cool. There's gonna be so many different types of trading, you know, from shop to shop with on planet, from planet to planet between manufacturers, uh, between contacts that you make in real life versus NPC. There's gonna be so many different types of trading, but I think again, what is most important to really stress here is that you make it available all the time. Like I, if I'm a trader and I really am playing the game to be a trader, I want to see it all the time. I want to have the accessibility to it all the time, whether on a ship or planet side. And if you should put it in your Moby glass is another, another discussion. I don't know if we should make it that accessible, but you know, like where your journal is and your finances, I did see a finance section, perhaps they're going to do it in there, but it has to be very detailed and it also has to be very simplistic. 
So again, thanks everybody for your input, your your really great comments when it came to trade. We had many of you that commented on what they'd like to see in regards to trading. I think Citizen Speak is gonna be a great hit. And I'm super happy that you guys are involved in this. And thank you very much for watching here on The Games. Citizen Speaks, if you guys like it, please share. Uh, keep it going. And let's get some more views. Uh, let's get some more shares. And thank you. Uh, next episode, what do you guys think? Tons of stuff. Um, maybe I'll put a little poll on the end of here what you guys want to see next. So for those hardcore traders that watch the whole thing, thank you very much. And maybe we'll do like a, a more like an FPS or an attack one on the next video to get like those types of people because uh, I'm I'm one of those too. <laughs> All right, gamers. All right, citizens. Thanks for being part of this channel. Thanks for being a part of this community. Go check out our Facebook page. Go check out our Twitter. Our Steam group is awesome. Forum, Team Speak, blah blah blah. Everything's happening here. Soon we're gonna have a Minecraft server. More Hearthstone. This is going to be the most amazing channel that everybody has ever seen. <laughs> See you on the next vid.